The other part of this is something known as the phosphorus to protein ratio. So the phosphorus to protein ratio is this idea that, for example, if you're somebody on dialysis, remember in chronic kidney disease, we talk about low protein diets. But when we start to get to things like dialysis patients, we actually want more protein because of the fact that in dialysis, it's a catabolic state, they are breaking down their protein. And we know that lower protein is linked to mortality. But we also know that in dialysis patients, the higher the phosphorus, the higher the mortality. So the ideal diet for a person would be is something that has low phosphorus, high protein in somebody who has advanced CK, I'm sorry, who has dialysis going on. So for example, let's compare cheese versus lentils. So if you were to compare cheese versus lentils, what you would find is phosphorus to protein on both of them, the ratio is 20. So from that perspective, you would say, okay, well, you know what? Both of these are the same, so I can pick either one. But remember, when you look at absorption, you want the least absorption of phosphorus, which is plant-based. So lentils would be a much better option because lentils would have a substantially lower absorption of phosphorus than cheese would. As a result of it, what you're looking at is a much better option. So once again, even if you're on dialysis, what we're talking about is looking more at plant-based options, specifically because of the fact that you're going to have better outcomes from all of the things we've talked about. So then let's get into the stuff that's really controversial. And for anybody who's asking questions, don't worry, we will address all of your questions at the end. I'm unable to see them because I don't have that window open. So I will open the chat window as soon as this talk is done. So my apologies if I haven't answered your questions just yet. So with protein, the guidelines are pretty interesting. Essentially, what you want to remember is in, pro in patients who have chronic kidney disease, generally speaking, we're talking about 0 0.6 to 0 0.8 grams per kilogram per day of protein going on. We recommend more plant-based proteins going on because of the fact that they are less acidic. And we'll talk about that in a second. But we have lots of studies that have shown that when you start to get into more of a lower protein type diet, what you will find is the overall mortality goes down. There's a number of thought process to that. Number one is the fact that as you start to increase protein, it's more acidic. The more acid load you put in your body, the faster your kidneys are going to die and the more likely you have overall mortality. In fact, when we look at our kidney transplant patients, there are some really elegant studies that show that giving patients sodium bicarbonate, which is baking soda and keeping their blood bicarbonate levels, which is kind of like the base of an acid base part, keeping their alkaline levels higher reduces the overall mortality. But here's the kicker. You can do exactly the same thing by eating alkaline type foods. What are they? Plants. That's all it is. So the more you shift from the standard American diet, the more you shift from more meat type diet to more plant type diet, the better off you're going to find as a health perspective going on. Now, in this particular study, the number needed to treat was two to 56. In our clinical population, we see so many patients that what we feel is using lower protein diets is actually part of our strategy and using protein sources that are specifically plant-based, we find that the more animal-based sources they eat, the more protein they spill versus the more plant-based sources they eat, the less protein they spill. Going back to that same question we talked about before, which was protein in the urine is one of the best predictors for how fast your kidneys are going to decline. So if you want to slow down the rate of decline of your kidney disease, you want to control the protein in the urine. Diet is a very important portion of that. Blood pressure, diabetes, weight, of course. And on top of that, we have really excellent medications that can help to augment everything we're doing. So the combination of things now that we have in nephrology that we didn't have available just 10 years ago is amazing. So there's so much hope now than ever before. So now with red meat, there's all sorts of data when it comes to heart disease and so forth going on. But when it comes to kidney disease, we don't talk about it as much. And it's the same idea. 
the more red meat consumption there is, the more there's risk for chronic kidney disease. Not only that, the worst offenders are always going to be processed meat. So processed meat is the worst offender. Then of course, you're going to dealing with red meat going on. Now, same thing when it comes to end-stage renal disease. When it comes to end-stage renal disease, the more red meat consumption, the more the risk. Oftentimes, you'll see that a lot of patients will be told by their clinics and dietitians, you need to eat more protein. You, It's not uncommon that, you know, when I go around in a dialysis unit, I'll see a patient have, you know, a fast food meal that they're trying to eat and thinking they're doing themselves good because they have protein, quote unquote, in the form of a Big Mac going on. And that couldn't be anything further from the truth. So helping patients to make those better decisions makes all the difference going on. Same exact thing when it comes to red meat is red meat, total protein makes a difference. But what we find is if you start to substitute red meat with other things, what could be other things? Tofu. What you'll find is you actually lower the risk substantially of progressing to end-stage renal disease going on. So this is why it matters so much. And when it comes in protein types, poultry, fish, eggs, and dairy are neutral. The data does not support that they harm or help as far as making the kidneys get worse faster. The issue with dairy, of course, there's concerns about phosphorus, there's concerns about IGF-1, there's other things such as new 5 gc and so forth, topics for another conversation. Okay. This was a very interesting study in 2016, which really sort of made everybody understand how powerful this idea of a low or a very low protein diet was where they were using keto analogs. And the whole idea was using keto analogs was when you did a very low protein diet, you would be missing out on your essential amino acids and that would lead to all sorts of medical issues. So they wanted to make sure that folks still had their complete essential amino acids and got a very low protein diet. So they would just give them these keto analogs. Why keto analogs? Because then they would be able to get through the stomach all the way to the intestines and get absorbed. That's the whole point of it. And what they were looking for was that what would happen if they put on a very low protein diet, meaning only about 0.3 grams per kilogram per day. And so what they found was that the end point, which was either ending up on dialysis or basically losing 50% of your kidney function, only 13% of the people in the keto analog arm reach that end point versus 42% of the people in the low protein diet reach that end point. And the reason this matters is because of the fact that our goal in life is we have a very hard time trying to stop kidney disease. Most of the time, we can't stop it. There's a lot of folks out there who talk about reversing kidney disease, but the problem is oftentimes what they're saying is they're preying on people who don't fully understand science. And so when you look at a creatinine and I make a creatinine number better, that does not mean I made your kidneys better. So this is unfortunately not the correct way to be able to assess it. When I make your kidneys better is where I can show you, for example, there is an actual physiological thing that changed your protein in the urine. If you were spilling four or 5,000 milligrams, I have gone ahead and brought it down to the normal range of less than 300. So that's where I would tell you that not only have I decreased your rate of decline of kidney disease, I have stopped the disease process. That's where you can show it. But creatinine is a terrible marker because creatinine isn't even produced in the kidneys. Mm -hmm.